Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to give thanks to our patrons for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys over there. Oh, here's Biden. Oh, let's see what this particular version has to say today. And hopefully it doesn't echo too badly. I'll try to get the sound about right. The pandemic no longer controls our lives. The vaccine that saved us from COVID are now being used to beat cancer. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. What happened to your eyes? Why are you squinting so much? Why do you seem so angry? Why are you growing horns? Hmm. Inquiring readers want to find out. Indeed we do. And meanwhile, yet another big explosion of a house. Baby, it's gas. This one's in uh, Crescent Township, Pennsylvania. We saw multiple ones in Virginia. And then when we went deeper and as time rolled on, we found out that there were people <laughs> involved with those alphabet soups involved with the exploding houses. So... Uh, I gotta wonder who who lived here. It did claim two lives, one male, one female. Female. It was felt miles away. This was huge. You know, some are wondering if you'll go down a little bit. Could this have anything to do with big quake motion? It, possibly. Um, possibly. You, I do think we're very close to some of the great quakes happening. Um, it could be a lot of things. We will get back to that as more details come out. Meanwhile, lots of reports of Ukrainian troops and also Free Russia Legion and RDK entering southern Russia and on the move north. So you have some Russian citizens who oppose the Putin regime joining with the Ukrainian forces and probably with a lot of other mercenaries and maybe even with some NATO forces. You know, this is um, a, a curious scenario. Again, never trust anything, uh, you know, any information and wade into it with feeling. And I feel like there is some deceit and deception going on here. This is a map of Russian forces allied with Ukraine bro breaking into Russian territory today. And as you see this, meanwhile, you know, everything has been about the fact that the war in Ukraine is over, pretty much. And yet the U.S. did uh, officially okay the sending of, I believe it was 300 million more. Of course, they want to send billions, billions and billions in this black hole of death and destruction but that is actually a very good description of the entirety of the system that we see and here you have the village of Tekino in the Kursk region completely under control of the liberation forces uh, legion freedom of Russia this quote says Putin's army is rapidly leaving the village leaving positions behind and abandoning heavy equipment um, you know, art of war, this would tell me get ready for a big attack from uh, Russia and their allies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think ever in a million years anybody is going to come on and admit that somebody is weak or, you know, give some idea that whatever they're saying is the truth. But I mean, they're going to keep trying. They'll put whatever they have to out on media, hoping that somebody will bite. And yet there have been those that have specifically said Russia and France at this point in time would have revolutions that would overthrow the governments there. So here you have Nebula, an anti-Putin hacktivist group claimed a cyber attack on Russian election systems targeting critical infrastructure for Putin's upcoming coronation. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I guess what's good for the goose, good for the gander. It's, it's all one big show. But there is uh, a lot of real darkness that's been on this planet for a long time. And what's coming out here is the stats show heart failure in Navy pilots is up 973%. These stats do not include all the other diseases and cancers and the cancers of the turbo kind that we are seeing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. 
This is, again, stacking the cards so that NATO doesn't have a chance. They're not supposed to have a chance. That's kind of the bottom line. And it's pretty darn obvious when you see it. There's a lot of things that should get people saying, what? What? Look at the size of these prints. Okay, so, you know, the scientists will say, well, they're, they were just carved there by some indigenous people. Yeah, they just, it's a piece of art. Uh, those look like footprints to me of some sort. Yeah, they're big. This, this post says handprints. Um, yeah, maybe, or footprints, you know, again, depends on the species of being, but whatever the species is, uh, if they are 12 <laughs> or more than that, I mean, that's just, a, like, how big are these? This, we'll be talking about a creature that's probably at 50 to 100 feet high at least. I mean, truly, truly gigantic, and I know Mud Fossil Roger uh, has delved deep into this, and and the reality is is one that many people will have a hard time accepting. Again, the Earth, what we have, was created from the remnants of Tiamat, and Tiamat was much much larger, and it had much much larger beings on it. I saw another post by somebody talking about how the oxygen level on Earth at the time of the dinosaurs, quote unquote was around 40% peak. And now, if you're at sea level, it might be 20 to 22% at most. And if you're up in the mountains at higher levels, only in the teens. So the oxygen level has definitely decreased. That has a huge, huge effect on how big things are going to get um, and how long things are going to live, too. I mean, I look at this and I, I feel the energy of Titans. I don't know if you've ever looked into Titans or studied Titans or understand much about them, but this is um, the energy. It seems to ooze Titan energy to me. And, you know, they were, it, according to the legends, wiped out by the, you know, the gods. Mm -hmm. The gods, like the Greek gods, like Zeus, etc., uh, Neptune, maybe, and Poseidon, uh, you know, again, Greco-Roman gods. Hmm. Really, what we're talking about here, in my opinion, is, is a lot of different extraterrestrial beings because, you know, terrestrial referring to Earth, well, they didn't necessarily originate here. Even the ones that did originate on Tiamat, that was Tiamat. Earth is, is something smaller and something salvaged here you have some hand prints hand carvings in wyoming who who did these well you, actually you find things like this all over the world they're they're anomalous and they're very very hard to explain mm. and so many of the areas in our american west and southwest in particular our areas have seen tremendous destruction and, uh, you know, death and destruction from warfare. And over here you see, how about that footprint? This, this is, is like 22 inches long, 8 inches wide. Who made this? Is, is it just something that's gotten bigger over time? Nah, I don't think so. Was it something that the indigenous people carved? Why? Why would they do this? All the legends of giants of all different sorts, some not so nice, some hungry for certain things <laughs> that we don't want to even talk about, uh, yet they're all over the world. And some of these have been dated to around 200 million years old. Well, if they are 200 million years old, they happened on Tiamat and not on Earth. Here's Michael Tellinger next to you know, a good four to four and a half foot long footprint. And you have all these legends of Hanuman, uh, who is a being that you might take to be a monkey man, but in reality, what we feel is more akin to a Bigfoot uh, in reality, who was devoted to Rama, who was an incarnation of Vishnu, according to the tradition, leaving all these different size footprints all over the world. Now, some are probably carved by devotees. I do think in this case there are some that are 
carved, and I think there are others that are, are not. And some, they say, date uh, millions of years old. But they are found all over all over India and also Southeast Asia as well. But there again, uh, uh, that footprint Michael Tellinger was st uh, standing next to, they've found very, very massive footprints up in Siberia where you know, nobody has really had any sort of major civilization that we know of. Uh, these are over in Sri Lanka, also found in Malaysia. And, of course, you have all the biblical references. When we're speaking about the, the Vedic uh, legends, myths, however we want to say it, again, there's always some sort of truth in them. They speak of Hanuman helping Rama rescue Sita, who was kidnapped by an Asura, and taken to the island of Lanka, Sri Lanka today. And an army of Bigfoot were used to create a bridge of floating rocks across from the mainland over to Lanka. And yet we see traces of this, exactly where it's said in the legends, in the Ramayana. And in the Mahabharata, we, we, we hear about Dwarka, which is the abode of Krishna, and we find a sunken city right off the coast, exactly where it was stated. Many people will bring up some of the biblical finds that we've seen that, again, show up in the, in the same spots as they are spoken of in legends. And the same thing we find with, with Sumerian legends and tales all over the world. Now, this is just, just weird. This is at uh, 45's Mar-a-Lago. They're having some sort of... Uh, some sort of strange celebration that has to do with Neptune. Neptune, I find it fascinating. Again, think about all the naming of NASA missions, right? Always has to seem to do with Greco-Roman mythology. Or how about the uh, Enlil uh, satellite out there, you know, keeping eyes on the sun. It, it's all right there in front of us. It keeps coming back to these... Greco-Roman gods, which in reality uh, are the Anunnaki and their offspring, which are carrying out the will of the Draco, which are the real rulers uh, of this dark system. So when you see 45 here, and here uh, this lady's doing a version of Phantom of the Opera performed at Mar-a-Lago again, and th these are the words she's singing, His power over us grows stronger yet. And though Dems turn from you, they glance behind the President of the United States is in their mind. It, it, it's weird how we see all these, and this is a few more uh, little clippings that you can see of the celebration. It's weird how we see all these sort of ritualistic acts, is it not? How about Bohemian Grove? Since we do focus so much on the left side of things, but how about on the right side of things? Because... You know, you'll find strange ceremonies going on with Geronimo's bones over at Yale and the Skull and Bones, but then you find, you know, big statues of owls and, you know, burning things at Bohemian Grove. This is at Mar-a-Lago again. It all feels so Anunnaki to me, and so does this. Uh, a picture of Jacob Rothschild that passed on recently. At least that's what they tell us. And this is true. We do know that the, the Red Shields funded both sides, WW2. We also know that they helped form Israel in 1948. Absolutely. These are not debatable points. Uh, yeah, ex absolutely. These are facts. Mm, what is really going on in the bigger picture of the world? Who's this guy? Well, one of the last indigenous people of Tasmania back in 1869. All So many different indigenous people and their ways across the earth have been completely wiped out you know one after another after another supplanted by uh, the religious systems of of the system itself which again wipes us out and pushes us away from real truth and this is why we always harp on these things 
and if Satan has led the whole world astray, then what what are the most dominant belief sets on the planet? Well, it's the Abrahamic tradition. So if, again, Satan has led the whole world astray, you should automatically look to the largest religions of the world as being missing the mark and not being accurate. When you see the natives, uh, not just of North and South America, who were slaughtered by the hundreds of millions, wiped out, everything about them replaced with the European ways, and it's not just there, Tasmania, look at the um, the British Empire, you know, it took over India, it it's everywhere, everywhere you look, the Anunnaki residue is there, the draconian system residue is there, it's all around, and all sorts of beings have just disappeared, uh, and I like this quote from Milan Kander, the first step in eliminating people is to erase their memory, destroy their books, their culture, their history, then have somebody else write new books, create a new culture, invent a new history. Soon people will begin to forget what is and what was. The outside world will forget even faster. Absolutely. And so, you know, the debate goes on over how do you interpret this scripture or how do you interpret that scripture or, you know, full immersion baptism or if you're talking about islam you know what are you sunni are the sunnis right or are the shiites right or is there something that's being missed the bigger picture is what happened to these giants what happened to all these different people that did exist on this planet but were eradicated and i can't tell you and Sita's kicking up her two cents how many times i've been on biblical forums and people have yeah. justified the slaughtering of, of groups of quote unquote giants by saying, well, you know, they were all the offspring, uh, you know, they were the offspring of the Nephilim. They were all evil. They had to be wiped out. But isn't that what's happening right now on planet Earth uh, to Homo sapiens sapiens? Are we all the offspring of, of the Nephilim ourselves? And, and this is how they look at us. I know, you know, you got to think what kind of story are they going to write about us? Are we going to allow that to happen? Are we going to allow our history to really be erased? Or are we going to turn it around and remember who we are and start insisting that we live in a state of truth? Yeah. Do you see what I see? Can you see that? Can you can you see the similarities there? Again, worldwide cultures worldwide structures have been just totally eradicated on purpose to hide the real history and to even hide what human is because most people don't have a clue unfortunately of what humanity is able to do now i just wanted to include this briefly because uh, cindy was picking up on this and she felt that somehow when all these when all these little structures were being discovered all over the world we, we started seeing these pop up that it, it was actually tied into Mr. Musk mm -hmm. right when I was um, just sitting with this information just a little bit um, instantly uh, Tesla popped into my head Elon Musk popped into my head also the just the word the mono, monolith this is going to be used as um, gosh it's hard to explain a, a turning of an era an age, an age turning of an age and it's going to be used you know of course they're always going to use everything like this for some type of um, some type of advertising for the word monolith a, a, a new a new money a new item a new technology but it just it doesn't just stop with uh tesla i looked a little bit further and i do feel alien ties with it now did aliens make it and set it down here no but i do believe that elon knows a little a little thing or two about the aliens and the ideas that they might have to shift humans this way or that way absolutely and again elon wants to send people to mars 
Well, the, the Martian system came to Earth and was brought here by those who we would call the Ajiji, who were working under the Anunnaki, who are under the control of the Draco, who are enslaved by their, the AI that the Draco actually created in our Earth terms probably more than millions of years ago. This is much, much bigger um, than what most people can imagine. So more to come on that as well. Um, a lot of interesting stuff with Mars and Venus and, and how they are so polar opposite. Not everything is, uh, you know, at all like we are told. Not at all. The history has been totally rewritten. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Look forward to your comments. Please do share these videos. Make sure you are subscribed. Namaste. Namaste.